Davies, the Bre Brexit Secretary, who I should say has struggled here despite feeling most unwell this morning. So thank you very much indeed for that. <laughs> well, if the camera suddenly switches to you, you'll we'll know, what's know what's happened. <laughs> right. Um, can I ask you about this deal? Because some people would say you've got a deal, but it was very easy to get a deal if you surrender everything. <laughs> um, uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg has said that you've rolled over without even getting your tummy tickled. <laughs> well, Jacob has his point to make. Look, people said that we couldn't get a deal in December, and we did. People said we wouldn't get the implementation period uh, in March, and we did. I mean, and we've got it agreed by all 28 uh, countries, uh, which is a pretty dramatic advance. Mm. We've got them moving on to the future arrangements, which is also what we needed to do. So I don't think, I don't think Jacob's got a point, really. It, it's, it's a big moment, but to get there, you've had to compromise on how long the transition period was going, going on for, the rights of EU citizens, free movement and all of that. And there are two areas which particularly worry your MPs here. The mm. first is about money. I can remember you saying last year to the House of Commons that you thought the negotiations on money would go all the way through this. Mm. And actually, you, we, we've agreed on money already. Mm. And a lot of your MPs say what you've done is you've handed over your trump card early on in the proceedings and they now have us over a barrel. No, I don't think that's correct. I mean, look, when we started down this route, uh, the talks of 100 billion here and there, and of course, if that's what they'd intended, then we would still be talking. But actually, we're, we're, we've reduced that to 40 billion, which is about what we pay for, a couple, for four years, three or four years. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that's, but, but that's a big issue there. They were worried about us paying in. Now we've agreed that. What leverage do we well, still have? As, uh, the, the, uh, Michel Barnier last week started off by saying, oh, nothing's agreed till everything's agreed. That's exactly right. I mean, the whole package goes together. So even now we could take the money back and not pay them a penny well, if we theory, don't get what we In want. theory, if we don't get the future deal. But I have to say that one of the stories of the last three, four months has been that the future deal, the future economic partnership and the future security and foreign and defence partnership are now looking incredibly probable, very, very highly probable, which perhaps some weren't saying before, before Christmas. OK, well, perhaps unfairly, I'm focusing on the problem areas. Well, that's natural. Um, the Irish border, mm. the Prime Minister could not have been clearer in the House of Commons. She said no British Prime Minister could possibly accept the backstop deal yeah. whereby uh, Northern Ireland would be part of the customs union and the single market. Couldn't happen. And yet there it is still in black and white in the legal text that you've agreed. Uh, I understand. What we've agreed is that we will find an option C, so-called option C. That is so that the, backstop. Backstop, the backstop. But it isn't the backstop that the Commission's laid out. Even Keir Starmer last week said no British Prime Minister could accept that. We agree with that. That's what the Prime Minister said. Uh, we will find a backstop option. But also the other thing to remember, so, uh, well, well, the, 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 there's a risk, uh, Andrew, in trying to focus just on the downsides. Because mm -hmm. the real likely outcome, and again, overwhelmingly likely outcome, is option A. Option A is we get a free trade agreement, we get a customs agreement. All of those make the Northern Ireland issue much, much easier to solve. Not easy, but much, much easier. We can get very entangled in sort of of technical course. detail. Yeah. Can I ask you a very simple yeah, question? 70 pages of it. So, so. What is a hard border? Well, a hard border is a border with, uh, with uh, customs posts on it, a, a very visible border. If you go to the, the border now, uh, all you can tell, uh, moving one, from one nation to another, is that the paint on the road changes colour from, from, from white to yellow. Uh, what we're going to do is ensure that the border that exists now, which after all is a border for excise and tax, even currency, uh, will continue to exist, but back away. It won't be visible, it won't be any, and it won't be any return so, to the borders of the past. To be absolutely clear, no guys in peaked caps and high-vis vests, yeah. no cameras, no booths, no wire, no nothing. That's right. That's right. No I mean, ba 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 basically, you know, we, we, will, we will do, as we do now, when, when we deal with smuggling across the, the Northern mm. Ireland Republic of Ireland border, it's dealt with by intelligence-led policing, intelligence-led customs investigations. It happens now, uh, and but that's are, what will happen in the future. Um, the, the, the relevant select committee said there is no example anywhere in the world of this working in the past. Well, that's because we've got a whole lot of new technology now. I mean, uh, we've also had uh, one European Parliament report, we don't agree with it entirely, but one European Parliament report saying technology can help here. We've got a lot of techniques used elsewhere in the world. The so-called, or I don't want to get, into, again, into too much technical detail, but the authorised economic operator, where you actually say to a company, you will report back, your accounts will be audited, your warehouses may be audited, but you will report, you will electronically pre-notify. These sorts of techniques are used mm. everywhere in the world. 
world, indeed including here, we're bringing things in from outside the customs union. So there are ways okay. of dealing with this. You can't just say, oh, we haven't done it anywhere else. And we haven't attempted to do it anywhere else. And so if uh, the Labour Party, the opposition, put down a motion saying we want in British law that there will be no physical infrastructure on the border, the government have no... Difficulty well, I mean, that, I, well, right. uh, let's, let's see what they write first, shall we? But the simple truth is, we have said from the beginning, from day one, right back uh, over a year ago when we started this, this, uh, this set of negotiations, we will not allow a return to board, the borders of the past. We will preserve at all costs the issue, the, the okay. Belfast Agreement or the Good Friday Agreement. That's what we're going to do. Let's jump back a little to the big picture in mm -hmm. that case. Yeah. If the, the final trade negotiations, which now start, follow the same kind of pattern as what we've seen so far, then we're going to end up more close to the EU in terms of um, access to markets, in terms of being part of EU agencies, and in terms of paying some money in, perhaps, than some Brexiteers expected. Well, I'm not sure about that. I mean, I don't think many of the Brexiteers said, had in mind that we wouldn't necessarily, say, be a part of Horizon 2020 or, mm. or one of the res uh, some of the research and development arrangements and so on. Uh, well, they all wanted to maintain access to the market, not membership of the market. That means tariff-free. I think the, it the feels Union a bit more broadly, like Norway than it maybe feels no, like Canada. It'll no, it'll be nowhere like Norway. Um, I mean, you teased me last time on your programme. You said, oh, Canada plus. And I said, no, Canada plus, 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 plus yeah. whatever. What I was trying to say to you was that this will not really look like any other deal as it stands at the moment. It will mm. be a free trade deal, a comprehensive one, the most comprehensive one ever. Even the European Union is now using words similar to that. And uh, that, will, that will deliver us a lot of access, but it will not be like Norway. A lot of upset about fishing, as you know, yeah. and about the access to British waters during the transition period going on as it is at the moment. Uh, the European Union wants that to be an endless process, that they have access in the future. Yeah, the, if you allowed that, that would be a betrayal of British fishermen, yeah, I mean, would look, it not? Look, let, let's be clear. Let, let's be clear about what's been agreed first, because it, there's been a lot of headlines which haven't necessarily represented it. Firstly, 2019, fishing year 2019, that will be agreed under the current arrangements. 2020, we've got a guarantee of no reduction of our quota share and consultation over the total quota. And, in, and uh, beyond that, we're going to be an independent coastal state making our own negotiations with our neighbours, as every other coastal the state does and it'll be under our control that's the determination that's what we're going to do and so british fishermen can can, can be sure that uh, any attempt to keep the eu access to british waters after we leave we, you you wouldn't put up with that you we will, we will we will negotiate with our with our around surrounding states so that we have access to their waters and theirs to ours and markets and so on but it'll be under our control it will not any longer be under the qualified majority voting arrangements that we currently have putting all of this together can we now put to one side the possibility of no deal in March 2019 and stop making arrangements for that? Well, no, you, you can never stop making arrangements because that's one of the things that guarantees the deal. If you get to, let's say, let's say you get to I don't know, November of this year, October, November of this year, and we don't have any other choices, yeah. then the deal will get much tougher. So for negotiating reasons alone, you have to do it. Also, countries always prepare. Uh, France is preparing, Holland is preparing, uh, Belgium. Germany are preparing. None of them expect it to happen, but they're making the preparations just in case. So, so it's, a bit like, it's a bit like, you know, you have house insurance. You don't expect your house to burn down. It's less than one in a hundred thousand chance, but you have the house insurance anyway. So when Philip Hammond, the Chancellor, says that I would expect that we would then be able to stand down planning for a no-deal exit in 2019, what he's saying, once we've got the implementation deal, he's wrong about that. Well, what, what he said, actually, in another context, I don't know where that quote is from, is he said, we will pro provide what we need to provide, no more. You know, he's the Chancellor. He doesn't want to okay. spend money without, without reason. Now, you've been um, travelling a lot recently, as you always do, but less to Brussels than to other European capitals. You've been to Tallinn, you've been to Vienna and Berlin and so forth. Um, from the outside, it looks like the EU27 are, are still in extraordinary lockstep, absolutely saying the same thing, no deviation. Um, from what you're hearing in private, is it a different situation? It is a bit different. I mean, look, in the first stage, they were talking about money. They wanted more of our money. That's easy, easily, easy to unify around. Citizens, easy to unify around. Now it's about their own direct commercial interests. Some have got financial services sectors. Some have got big manufacturing centers, sectors. All of them want to preserve that. That's what they're going to do. All right, very, very quickly, you've heard all these allegations about vote leave breaking the law during the referendum campaign. As a leading Brexiteer, what's your reaction? Well, the first thing is, I think you used the phrase before, uh, you know, a, a hedge of question marks. The individuals concerned have denied it. Uh, it's really a matter 
if there's any if there's any truth to it at all for the electoral commission to investigate but that's for them to decide not for a minister to say david davis thanks very Thank much you. for talking to us